the day before yesterday, I was um, explaining a bit about how uh, in the Catholic Church that we had a classic example of the development of bottom-up thinking that ultimately led to having to approach Christ through Mary and exalting her almost to the level of the Trinity rather than top-down thinking. And of course, uh, the Reformers, uh, and this was a, one of the wonderful things about the Reformation, the Reformers had to dismantle all of that bottom-up thinking as they began with the Scriptures, not with centuries of tradition, but with the Scriptures and the Word of God and uh, thought top-down. That's one of the great things and one of the important things about being familiar with the Reformers and their teaching. It helps us as we read their writings and study what they wrote to uh, for us to think in a top-down way. And that's what the Reformation was about. But they saw themselves not as doing something revolutionary in terms of something novel, but going back to the early centuries of the church. And uh, I'd also been mentioning a while back that uh, the, um, uh, the early church fathers taught so much about the Trinity. And uh, it was just a continual theme of their preaching because they were uh, introducing the gospel into cultures uh, that maybe believed in many gods, uh, couldn't, couldn't grasp the thought of three persons in one God, um, which was just completely unique. Um, and also with heresies at the same time that, again, couldn't accept three persons in one God and tried all kinds of variations on that theme that were more acceptable to human reason, reasoning. And of course, again, that's top-down thinking where human reason tries to bring the mysteries of God down to something it can comprehend. And uh, before I, I uh, sing another hymn today by Isaac Watts again on the Gloria, I'm going to read a bit to you by um, one of the church fathers. It's Jerome, uh, who was writing in the 4th century, 5th century. And uh, it's classic again, reading from this book called The Early Church Fathers, Daily Readings by Nick Needham, that I found so helpful. And uh, in fact, I've got the person wrong because who I'm going to read from is from St. Cyril of Jerusalem in the fourth century. Uh, so I apologize for that. Cyril was the bishop of the church in Jerusalem, uh, same church that uh, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon in Pentecost. Um, and uh, this is about three to four centuries later. And uh, this is what he says. Someone will say, if the divine essence is beyond our understanding, why do you even bother to talk about these things? If it's beyond us, why try even to think about them? I answer, merely because I can't drink up the whole river, can, can't I even in small amounts take what brings me blessing? Just because with eyes like mine, my sight can't suck up the whole sun, can't I even look on it enough to meet my needs? I praise and glorify him who created us, for it is a divine command that says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And here's a wonderful sentence. I'm trying now to glorify the Lord, not to define what he is. And this is at the heart of all Christian worship. Worshipping and glorifying what we cannot define or understand. And that's where, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, when we make time for worship, not for intercession, not praying for ourselves or for other people, but just to worship God and contemplate God, that the Holy Spirit can lead us into places that we have never been before and into not understanding or defining mysteries, but experiencing the mystery of the Trinity. And surely that has to be worth making time for in our own personal lives. And surely it should be what we long to know and experience in our corporate worship. And again, returning to what Adullam's Cave Music is about, 
we should be drawing on this rich, rich store and resource, this treasure house of hymns, to help us express this worship. Like in this hymn today, the God of mercy be adored. And again, uh, Isaac Watts is just having to get down again to uh, are drawn back into the economic trinity, what each member, uh, each person of the trinity distinctively does. The God of mercy be adored Who calls our souls from death Who saves by his redeeming word and new creating breath to praise the Father and the Son and Spirit all divine the one in three and three in one let saints and angels join 